2 billion people without access to electricity. Oil supplies that are running out. The renaissance of coal. The myth of the necessity of nuclear power. Every second person in the world lives in slums. Is our imagination equal to the task of breaking down these barriers? When I look at cities like Los Angeles, I can psychologically understand that people can hardly imagine that the huge amounts of energy that are used here can be replaced by renewable energy and that it can be done in a short time. And even without emissions. I expect that in the future, coal will be still the backbone of the electricity generation. I can psychologically understand it, although the fact cannot be justified. We have to build each year 20 new nuclear power plants. You're just naive. You don't know, understand what you're dealing with if you don't realize that there are these obstacles. To think that all of our energy will come from renewables is uh, very far from reality. The uncertainty that this potential would suffice is just laughable. Always with the argument that it's not enough. And you create a bridge to keep doing something else for a few decades longer. The main thing is no renewable energy because these renewable energies will trigger a structural change for the energy sector. How to live? Following what concept? Many say the time is ripe for a decision that can change our lives from the ground up. The decision about energy sources. Because every region of the world has access to renewable energy. Solar, wind power, bio sources, hydropower, geothermal energy, gratis, primary energy provided by nature, regional, decentral more than 100%. Everything depends on the answer to the one great question. What energy do we want to live with? The windmills do so much power that every house we pass, every farm, every factory, it's getting its power from these windmills. In Germany, they could forget about their 25 big coal stations if they built hundreds of these combined heat and power stations. Some of the excess power that's generated by the wind turbines could be put into the battery and you could have any amount of energy storage you want, anything from one hour to 20 hours of storage. The general idea is to uh, really help drive forward the electric car revolution. I don't think there's any other technology that is going to solve the problem. We actually do not have a car, we have a mobility concept. I realized in the beginning not only wind power plants could help, but a range of energy sources. Energy efficiency and saving energy is part of that. So in the end, we can make the world 100% renewable. The transition of the energy supply to 100% renewables. Concrete courses of action for everyone. Updating in buildings and in awareness. With great impact. That is 39 billion in buying power that we can give back to humanity.
Energy autonomy, a cultural value. Instead of a few owners, we suddenly have hundreds of thousands or even millions of owners. Energy production will be democratized. There are more and more self-providers, more individual autonomy, more regional and national autonomy. And that is only possible with renewable energy for everyone. With this technology, we can revolutionize life in African villages. These African villages could already use the same technology as they use in Los Angeles, in Tokyo, in Germany, in Frankfurt. The same technology that is available for the whole world. Uh, so re poverty is declining and my goal is to make sure to bring it to zero. When Bangladesh will have zero poverty, meaning that not a single person in Bangladesh will be a poor person. Uh, I'm saying let us make it 2030. We believe in the next, you know, three to five years time, solar, you know, electricity, where rich grid parity means the electricity price generated by solar will be similar or comparable to the electricity price you pay today. The future of the world will be decided by whether or not the revolution of the energy supply practically cuts across all barriers. <laughs>